Hi, my name is Rich, and today I want to talk about the Battlesmith Artificer subclass for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. You can find this in two of the books. I believe it's the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything book and one of the Eberron books. Uh, I'll put the description of it up here. So in the video we'll go over the subclass, its abilities, its skills, what feats you should choose, what races complement it, and just general tactics. I'm saving the, going over the spells for uh, another video, which should be linked at the end of this one. Um, yeah, let's get started. Now, first we'll go over the background of the uh, Battlesmith. And in the description, it says that uh, armies require protection. And sometimes it has to put back things together if it defense is fail. A combination of protector and medic. A Battlesmith is an expert at defending others and repairing both material and personnel. To aid in their work, battlesmiths are accompanied by a steel defender, a protective companion of their own creation. Many soldiers tell of stories of nearly dying before being saved by a battlesmith and a steel defender. In the world of Eberron, battlesmiths play a key role in the house Caneth's work on the battle constructs and the original Warforged, and after the last war, these artificers led efforts to aid those who were injured in the war's horrific battles. So the Artificer, it has its roots in the Eberron uh, setting, but there are Artificer-style classes, subclasses, and Alchemist-based subclasses way back to 3rd edition and possibly 2nd edition of D&D as well. I think they were very popularized in Pathfinder version 1, and uh, the Alchemist especially, it has tables upon tables of all these complicated things. Uh, potions and uh, recipes and all that sort of thing. But the Battlesmith in D&D 5th Edition is more streamlined that way. It's a general all-rounder. It has a little bit of healing. It has a little bit of melee. Well, it has a lot of melee. But uh, yeah, if you want a great support class that can help aid and bolster the frontliners then this is the class to pick. Before that it is a very heavily melee focused class. Uh, level 5 you normally get the second attack ability which is similar to the fighter and the barbarian and I think the monk gets it as well. But uh, generally speaking if you want to hide behind the front line and poke over and deal damage then this is the class to pick. So, some of the races I would recommend for this subclass is the Bugbear first. Bugbear is naturally got a giant reach, so you can reach five feet over. So if you have your Steel Defender in front of you, you can reach over it and attack. And uh, this is also true, you can like reach over most creatures that take up five by five space. Uh, so it's very flexible like that. It means you can use martial weapons without relying on pole arms. Uh, the next choice is the Simic Hybrid, which is from the uh, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Now the Simic Hybrid is uh, more of a melee focused thing. Uh, when you hit a certain level you can up your armor class without having to rely on heavy armor. Uh, naturally you will only get medium armor with a, this Artificer, so this really helps complement your front range battle abilities. And the uh, Videlkin as well. They naturally get a plus two to intelligence, and I think that they work really well in any Artificer class, and a lot of Wizard classes as well. But uh, it's from Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, so it's more of a specialized thing. If you don't have that book, uh, the two races I would recommend from the Player's Handbook are the Human and the Half-Elf. The Human, perfect all-rounder, and I'm not taking into account the Variant Human, that can uh, forego the plus one to every stat and get a feat instead. If you want to choose that one, uh, we're going to cover the feats next. But lastly, the half-elf. Uh, you can boost up your intelligence and your constitution so you can take more hits and you can keep fighting. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the feats. So I've chosen four feats for this. The first one being Crusher from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. It lets you, when you attack with a bludgeoning weapon, you can push your enemy five feet in a direction. So this gives you a chance to push them out of the way. 
and potentially make them come back into your range, provoking an opportunity attack from one of your colleagues. The second feat I would recommend is the Fear Touched feat. Uh, it gives you an extra boost to intelligence and gives you Misty Step and another spell at level 1. Uh, the Misty Step is fantastic because you can take damage, but ideally you want to be just outside of the range of the enemy's melee and poking in with it, poking in with your damage. And the next one's Polearm Master. Because you have the ability to use uh, martial weapons, you get access to glaives, spears, that sort of thing. And Polar Master is fantastic because if uh, something comes into your range, you can use your opportunity attack against them. And finally, Warcaster. Uh, with opportunity attacks, generally it has to be a melee attack. But with Warcaster, you can use a spell and uh, use a cantrip, for example. You can use one of your spell slots, but they're very expensive when it comes to the economy of using the Artificer. So I recommend a cantrip. But as soon as you hit level 5, uh, a lot of the cantrips double up in damage. So choose your cantrips wisely. So at level 3, you gain proficiency with uh, Smith's tools. Battlesmith uh, goes hand in hand with the Smith tools. Now, this can be used to repair armor, but generally speaking, it's more of a out of combat themed ability. I would recommend you choose something that can make, uh, I think there's like gems tools. If you can start uh, refining gems, things like that, uh, it may take a long time on your off time mechanically, but it will pay dividends for both selling jewels for cash and you can use jewels as components for some of the wizard's uh, higher level spells. So we're just going to take a quick look at the Battlesmith spells. At uh, third level, it gets Heroism and Shield. At fifth level, Branding Smite and Warding Bond. The Branding Smite further cements it as an alternative to the Paladin. Uh, ninth level, you get Aura of Vitality and Conjuring Barrage. Thirteenth level, Aura of Purity and Fire Shield. And at seventeenth level, Banishing Smite and Mass Cure Wounds. Now, we're going to go over these uh, in depth and detail in the second video that's going to come out later this week. So don't forget to tune in for that if you want to really go through the spells in depth and figure out and uh, map out what sort of spells you want to pick for your class. So, at level 3 you also get access to martial weapons, as we've mentioned before. Uh, it's worth noting that you don't need to focus on your strength or dexterity because you can use your intelligence as a substitute for that. So this means that a lot of the traditional melee classes and a lot of the traditional melee races are not necessary when it comes to the Battlesmith. If you can substitute intelligence in, you can uh, gain access to a lot of both melee and ranged. Theoretically, if you have a ranged weapon, just in case, uh, it's always handy to have one in your back pocket. And if you can't get close enough to the enemy to fight, then this is great. Now there's a bit of a wall of text here, but uh, this is all about the Steel Defender. This is the core concept of the uh, Battlesmith. You essentially get a small four-legged creature, mechanical creature that uh, you can use to fight in battle. Uh, in a minute we'll go over the stat block of the Steel Defender, but thematically you can go with all different types. In the Tasha's Cauldron artwork, it has like a Steel Mastiff dog. But uh, I've had players like uh, Doa, he was a total artificer battlesmith, and his steel defender was like a brass lion, I believe, which was fantastic. Looked brilliant. Well, it looked brilliant in my imagination. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just have a quick look at that. Uh, the steel defender, it shares your initiative count and it takes its turn in immediately after yours. So it can't take its turn as you're taking your turn, but in theory, you could hold an action and wait for the Steel Defender to make their action. It all depends how lenient your DM is. Now, if you don't tell it what to do, it's going to take the dodge action. So this is just like a default uh, avoiding damage sort of thing, which is fair enough. But uh, generally speaking, you're, if you're not incapacitated, you're going to be telling it what to do. This does cost a bonus action. So uh, the Polar Master feat it says you have the option of using your bonus action to deal an extra damage, uh, an extra attack at 1d4 damage. Of course, you should choose a steel defender before this. 
But uh, yeah, it uh, works out well with your action economy because you can use your bonus action to issue commands. And with your action, if you're not casting a spell, you can use your uh, level 5 ability to attack twice. With the Steel Defender, it's worth picking up the Mending Cantrip because that's one of the special cantrips that are directly affecting it. And it gives the Mending Cantrip a lot more use out of the initial being able to fix a tear in a sheet or mend something back together. It's, uh, it really gives an extra dynamic to this. And it's worth noting your Steel Defender is expendable, I would say. You can make a new one every long rest, but I don't think it would be very fair on the emotions of the Artificer if you have to rebuild your Steel Defender every time, especially if he gets attached to it like a pet. Now, looking at the Steel Defender's stat block, uh, it has Repair three times a day and Force Powered Rend, which is the basic melee attack. And you can Deflect Attack as well. I think this class shows you that the reactions are very important. Uh, you can use the reaction in the Steel Defender, you can use your own reaction for a reaction attack. And you would note that the hit points are directly tied to the level of your Artificer class. So if you're multi-classing into Artificer, maybe the Battle of Smith is not the best option. Uh, oh, the melee attack, the Force Powered Rend, is connected to your spell attack modifier. So of course, higher intelligence means it's going to deal more damage. It's not noted in the stat block what the pulling weight of the Steel Defender is, but theoretically you should be able to uh, use it to haul extra luggage as you're making your way through a large dungeon. So, at level 5, you get to attack twice every time you choose the attack action, and this really cements the frontline melee focused abilities of this subclass. If you give yourself a plus one weapon uh, from your infused items, then it can really start to shine when you hit the fifth level. Now, at level nine, you get access to Arcane Jolt. Essentially, when you attack something or when your Steel Defender attacks something, you can channel extra damage to go into it or you can choose to heal something that's close to you. This is where the Paladin comparisons come in with the Steel Defender. Now, to, an extra 2d6 damage at level nine is quite powerful, but it doesn't scale up a lot until you hit the much later levels. Being able to revive some of your melee focused companions that have been knocked down is a really strong tool and shows you the power that this subclass has second to front. Now this is tied to your intelligence modifier, uh, so it doesn't scale up, but it's still a fantastic thing to have. It helps keep you on par with the power levels of the rest of uh, your companions. And finally, at level 15, you get access to Improved Defender. This basically uh, stat boosts your Steel Defender and your Arcane Jolt to deal extra damage. Uh, your Steel Defender is going to have more defense so it can tank more hits. And it really emphasizes your Steel Defender should be using the Deflect Attack ability. So overall, I would say this subclass is a great tanky second to front build. Uh, we've went through some of the basics of uh, what you should choose with it, but uh, don't forget to check the next video out and we can go through all of the spells and uh, infused items that I would choose for this subclass. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, don't forget to check out, we've got a, this channel, we've got lots of other subclass videos, uh, this should be in a playlist of all the Artificer subclasses. I've got a second channel where I do Magic the Gathering videos, uh, playing Magic the Gathering Arena. And uh, there's a Discord as well if you want to continue the conversation. And uh, if you want to really help out the channel, there's a Patreon. But if you can't afford to join the Patreon, then leave a like, leave a comment, and that really helps out the channel. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.